What's up everybody, I'm the Man Goose, and welcome back to another edition of what I'm going to be calling the third point of view, since there's three of us, we're talking about third person games. Um, today we're going to be talking about character creation, and I have uh, two gentlemen joining me from Project Stamina and Undying Games. Now, you probably recognize Mr. Fancy Pants by now, you probably start to think he's going to be my, my co-host. No, it just keeps lining up where he's uh, he's kind of the, uh, the, the guy I needed, so... Uh, uh, Mr. Fancy Pants, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, for uh, people who are seeing me for the first time, I am the producer of Project Stamina, a third-person action MOBA. And in the realm of character creation, I do high-level design philosophy and uh, guidance along the character production pipeline for both game design and art design. Awesome, awesome. And joining us from Undying Games is Simon. How you doing, man? We're doing well, thanks. Um, I'm Simon, I'm the lead character artist of Uday Games. Basically, I'm in charge of all the leading of the 3D art department and also collaborating with uh, concept art design uh, from characters and level design. Right on. And uh, Simon was kind enough to provide us with some new turntables of the ethereal characters. So uh, if you're if you've been hankering for some new ethereal content, um, and this is just you know uh, a different perspective of the characters you've already seen, but it is some new stuff. So thank you, Simon, for that. And I also again want to thank uh, Failco Punch for allowing me to use some of her um, gigant gigantic clips from her YouTube channel. And go 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 check her check her out. Um, you know, help me thank her. You know, go drop her a sub. It's free. It's and it, it'll make me happy. So, yeah. Let's uh let's dive into the topic now. So, what I wanted to start with is the the beginning. Uh, where do you start creating a character at? Uh, you know, what what's the catalyst that 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 begins the character's creation? You know, is it is it something that's needed for the game? Is it a cool art concept? Is it just a cool concept that one of the game designers have? You know. That's kind of what I'm trying to trying to find out. So, uh, Simon, why don't you get us started? How, how do you? Where, where do you guys start at over at uh, Undying Games? Um, so we usually start um, with the lore department ideas, and at the same time, we try to fill the next um, role to work with. I mean, uh, once we have one character done for each role, um, we start over again with the next stage of characters. Um, once it's finished, the initial idea, like, um, we need a sky slayer that looks like flames, but we want it to be a creature, uh, and that it doesn't have any weapon. Okay, we start concepting, doing some thumbnails and sketches that allows us to uh, bring that idea that give uh, the aesthetics what we want. Uh, making sure that the character has a strong um, lecture ability and clearly communicates what it does. Basically, is the workflow that that we follow. Nice. I like that it's very lore driven, as I am a huge lore head, and I believe Fancy is too. Speaking of Fancy, oh yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you guys do it over over at Project Stamina? So we take, um, in some ways, the opposite approach. The the end result of a character whose look is very clearly readable in game and their design reflects their gameplay is definitely the ultimate goal. Like if your tanks don't look tanky and your DPS characters don't look dangerous, then you're doing something wrong. Um, but we start with the mechanics that we want to see. So say we want an assassin, we look at good assassin mechanics and lay out a kit based entirely on its function. And then when that starts getting tuned into place and we like how a set of abilities start playing together, we look for artistic ways to express that that tie in together with each other. And I think that they're both really uh, very valid processes. Our first character, R4, was actually designed uh, the way that you guys do it which was we took this really awesome looking character and went, okay, let's build some abilities that fit with the role that he looks like he plays, which is kind of a tanky bruiser. So 
We, we do a little bit of both, but what we've been focusing on is starting with the mechanics and then building toward an aesthetic end. And I assume it's probably the same for, for, for both of you guys. It's uh, It probably varies by character to character, but just kind of looking for the, the, the main process. But yeah, there's, it's probably different things that each time, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it totally depends. Yeah, yeah it, it really helps to be able to attack the problem from a bunch of different directions because then as soon as you hit a roadblock on one path you have another path that you can take to get the rest of the way there that helps you clear out what you're struggling with on the other side like there the the more different directions you can take in doing character design i think the more robust your design process is going to be and the better all of your characters are going to look at the end right on so uh, moving on, so what are the the steps involved in creating the character and how do you keep them balanced? Like, I'm sure that you have a great idea for this awesome ability, but, you know, somebody else might have to step in and say, okay, you know, maybe having this person invulnerable and dealing thousands of damage on one ability probably isn't the smartest thing, you know, in game result. So, um, so what can, how, how do you guys manage that? Uh, fancy, go ahead. So... A big part of that comes down to testing. Um, something can look good on paper, but you put it in game and it combines with something else that you hadn't thought about when you were just looking at the kit and whoops, it's broken. So a lot of it is building a system that allows you to rapidly change your balance, your numbers and your mechanics. Uh, but from the outset, the closer you are to a balanced character, the, easiest, the easier it is to get there. And for that, we focus on a philosophy of making sure that no character can do everything. We focus just as hard on the character's strengths as we do on their weaknesses. Because if you have a character that doesn't have any weaknesses, you have a character that's too good to put in the game. And if you have a character that doesn't have any strengths, then you have a character that nobody's going to play. So making sure that we focus on both of those equally is how we create like dynamic and balanced characters in a diverse cast. You want people to feel powerful playing that character without actually being overpowered. Yeah. And we want to, we want people to feel like playing around the character's weaknesses are just as important as playing to the character's strengths, whether that's by like carefully positioning themselves in a fight by needing to offset their weaknesses it's all part of the same puzzle okay lost you there for a second but i think uh, i think we got the gist of it um simon what, what, are the, what are some of the steps you guys take and how do you guys keep everything balanced over there in undying um first of all the the department the gda department um think of what meat uh what meat we we like to to make um making sure that uh, that concept, that initial idea, represent uh, what we need that that meet uh, cover ups. Um, then we jumps to come to do comparisons to other meets. Um, if we have used that uh, that specific ability before, uh, if that ability have CC, why that ability should have CC? Um, but uh, the myth has to go hand in hand uh, with what its abilities are and what can people expect by just looking at, at the character. Right. Um, once, once the GDA uh, department has that final draft, um, they begin to specific, specify numbers on just paper and then pr the programming team can um, apply that on the a balancing cards for tweaking it basically is it, is it kind of frustrating like when you rig up an, an animate for an ability and then it winds up that, that ability just isn't going to work and they need something new is it frustrating that you have to redo that or is that just kind of expected and part of the process it's it's just like uh part of the process uh we we always do uh, a lot of refinement uh on the nice steps uh to make sure uh we end up with what the gda department describes at the initial stage 
And have you guys run into that problem, Fancy, over at uh, Project Stamina? Like, having, like, an ability just didn't work in game, so you had to go back to the we, drawing board with it? We haven't done anything that is so mechanically out there that we don't think it can be tuned by numbers yet. Um, part of part of our process to avoid the loss of the loss of development time and resources into an ability, especially in animation, which is one of the most work intensive parts of character design, uh, having to throw work away. One of the things we do to avoid that is we once we have a kit that we like, we split our character development paths so that concept art is working on the character design simultaneous to development implementing the kit. So we actually run our character designs out on placeholder models, which you can see in your video. Uh, one of our characters is not yet rigged and animated, but we've got their abilities functioning on a play on a placeholder model in the game. So we get we get kind of an early canary in the coal mine to see whether or not an ability feels good and is going to work before we spend a bunch of resources bringing it to life on the finished rig and model. Right. You, and you mentioned that the rigging and animations is kind of the one of the more work intensive things. Uh, Simon, what do you guys, what what do you believe is the the hardest part of creating a new character? I think that. Uh, along with uh, animation and, and rigging the process is the concepted uh, process. We we did uh, a lot of iterations, um, concepting and uh, wanting to search uh, for the right um, the right shapes, the right looking for a character that clearly um, in, communicates what we want to this myth. Uh, this is specific myth to be. Um, we are also uh, concept all the the abilities to make uh, sure that the Department of Technical Art and the sound designer uh, works um, close with concept and the end result is what we want at the starting point. But not all the times works. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking yeah. of end result, like when do you guys when when do you guys say okay, this character is ready. Let's let's they're they're alpha ready. They're ready to be tested by by people in a gameplay environment. Well, like when do you when do you, when do you make that determination, fancy? So early, early, especially alpha testing is really just about making sure it feels good, um, and isn't really horribly mechanically broken. So for us, as soon as the character, because we're an alpha, well, we're, because we're pre-alpha still, as soon as the character's kit is operational, even on a placeholder model, we're ready to throw it in and get it testing. And people will come back with, this number is way too high, this number is way too low. It didn't feel like I did anything when I pressed my speed boost, maybe it needs to go faster. Um, and the way that our engine is set up is those are all very, very, very fast changes. So it's easier to get something operational at all into the system and getting tested than it is to try and tune the numbers on the back end without throwing it at a bunch of testers. Because the more eyes you have on something, the better perspective you're going to get. That, that, that process will definitely change when we introduce ranked games later down the road. Like You need to put way more polish and fine tuning on a character before you introduce them to a ranked or a competitive environment. But for early testing, pretty much as soon as the abilities work, I want people's opinion on it. Right on. Uh, Simon, same, same, same question. Like when you guys decide that a, that a character, they're, they're ready, that they're kind of done sort of. Mm. As we need that every character has a nice game flow, Mm, I mean, if it needs a specific feedback effect, or if it needs that, that a specific animation works clearly, what we talk about later, uh, that aspect should be uh, checked once we are totally happy with how it looks um, and how it behaves in the game. Maybe if the character needs a little bit of love from some specific department, 
And once we end that stage of refinement, uh, we can start testing, trying to break its abilities with another character um, and so. And then if all the elites have green light for the character, we can call it finish it. Right on. So I'm gonna uh, bring up something I wasn't really planning on, but I, I thought of it as we were talking here. Both Ethereal and Project Stamina have gone about community inclusion in different ways. Um, Ethereal, they, you you guys completely redesigned the look, the appearance of the of the map and the and the and the heroes and everything based on the feedback you got from that initial like here's what our game's going to be and everybody's like yeah it's a little too cartoony. Then you guys stepped it up and turned the, the models into more of a fun, kind of a Final Fantasy inspired models. So that was really good to see you guys taking that input from the community. And then for Project Stamina, uh, Fan Mr. Fancy Pants, you guys have your um, your cake uh, character. Uh, you want you want to talk about cake for a little bit? Okay. So uh, cake was it's it's a community designed character that uh, we kicked off when we hit our second. Patreon fundraising goal. And the way that this works is our entire is, I write, I write these articles every week, uh, highlighting a very, very specific granular aspect of character design. You know, what, what's their role? What are their functions going to be in the game? What is their big weakness that they can't, that they need uh, an ally to shore up for them because they don't have it on their own. Um, and I outline how though how that piece of design is interacts with the project stamina environment and then the the Patreon community votes on what options like what directions to take that specific piece of design and over the last year we've been building a character that is very very close to complete uh this this next week we will be finalizing their last ability uh, all of the abilities were designed by community members to fit this predetermined set of design goals that we chose, that they all chose together. And it's turning into a really cool looking character. It's not something that I would have come up with on my own, but I'm getting really excited to play them. Right on. That's awesome. And then, uh, Simon, how, how do you feel about the, the changes you guys have made to, to Ethereal? Do you, do you like the, um, the new art direction that you guys went with since back in what was it like november of what, 2018 i think yeah um i think that the the new direction um has more um, power of attraction uh because uh, all the community was so hyper but with the the um the looking of paragon and we need to um get to the community that the same hype with our graphics, right? Um, so that direction um, allow us to start uh, experimenting with some different uh, workflows and get the, forget the results that we are um, looking for in, in these nice stages. Um, we start um, involving with uh, some company of 3D scan uh, faces for our characters. Um, since um, Excel, we are doing this with, with our characters, uh, working with some nice um, 3D, 3D scans for faces and body parts that allow us uh, to bring that character um, a more realistic look and also for the environment, uh, our labor designers are working so hard to match this uh, new um, realistic, um, like Final Fantasy and stuff. Um, and yeah, it's working so well. Right on. I just want to let it be known too that Exeol's body scans were taken from my body. So <laughs> if I were to take my shirt off, I would look exactly like Exeol. So. That's true story. Uh, true. <laughs> true story. Not that yeah. true. So, uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to bring up about character creation at all? No. Uh, <laughs> I, I just think it's like 
one of the coolest unique pieces of the game design puzzle and it's really for people that don't that haven't had the privilege of working on a game with a studio in their lives like a lot of people think oh you just come up with this cool idea for a character and then you hand it to the people who bring it to life uh, but it's a way more involved process than that uh, there are so many like tiny details that like you probably think you thought of when you first come up with a character design, but when you get into concept art, like you said, or when a concept art gets handed off into 3D modeling, um, and then modeling gets handed to animation where it has to get tied back to the execution of the abilities in the game system, there's so many minute details that have really significant impact all along the, all along the pipeline. Um, that are that are just fascinating uh like oh you've got a character with a cape that's super cool turns out from a lot of camera angles the cape blocks the character's view like the player's view of what the character is doing and their silhouette becomes ambiguous and hard to read this cape was a really awesome looking idea this is actually something we're going to have to go back and fix with one of our characters because we threw a badass looking cape on them. And then in animation, we realized that we weren't getting the we wanted 100% of the time. We're going to have to go back, make some moderate aesthetic changes to the model. Um, and that kind of, oh, I didn't think of that, never stops appearing. No matter how many games you work on, no matter how many characters you design, you'll always find something new that you didn't know. So it's a way more involved process than just make a kit. Hey, we learned from the Incredibles, no capes. No capes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, th I think that's going to about wrap it up. Um, I'll just give you guys an opportunity to, to, to plug your game and, and talk to the fans a little bit, say whatever you you, you want, or uh, you know, if you have any, like a personal Twitch or YouTube or anything like that, you want to plug, go go for it as well. Uh, Simon, you got anything? Um, yeah, we we expect that in the next months uh, you all can uh, see well what we are uh, been working on the, the the past years, and it's amazing with uh, how all is coming up together um, making some stuff that the community likes and I really hopes that um, you guys can enjoy it as we enjoyed it to making right on you you guys hear that yeah within <laughs> the month that's that that makes me very excited um, Mr. Fates Pants, anything? So if you haven't signed up for our mailing list already, it's at projectstamina.com. The scroll to the bottom of the page. When information for our alpha is ready to roll out, it will go out over that channel. So sign up for the mailing list, check your inboxes occasionally if you don't have notifications on your phone. And if you're coming to PAX East, let us know we are going to be there and we want to see you right on i might possibly join you i'm still figuring oh, out the, yeah. lo the logistics of that but uh, i Hype think that's real yeah hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna wrap it up for this episode i appreciate you guys coming out simon fancy great guests great conversation really enjoyed it but for now this is the mangu signing off you guys have a good one mangu